Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson comes to us from the book of Mark. It will be read to us from Sister Elaine Jones. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Comes from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. This scripture talks about the healing of blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus. They came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be God. Thank you, God. Amen. And then we'll now have a selection before the Lord. Lord, help me to hold out. Lord, help me to hold down. Lord, help me to hold down. Until my chance has come. Lord, Lord, 
Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me to hold it. I'm just too bad to make it all alone. Help me to hold out. Help me to hold out, Lord. Help me to hold out. Until my chains. Until my chains. song with a wonderful song. God just got a way that's so, 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 so sweet and right on time as we consider our text for the morning. And our sermon is entitled, How to Call for Help. How to Call for Help. Last week we were, hold on, help is on the way. And now we're how to call. Sometimes we got to learn how to call for help. Amen. And so I thank God for that song again this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this time of preaching. We thank you for the word that has come forth from the, from the reading of the scripture. And now, God, as your preached word goes forth, show yourself mighty and show yourself strong. Feed our hearts, our hungry souls, and our spirits, Lord. God, only you can, and we know that only you will. Help us to hold out until we see our change coming. Help us to, to call on you, God, until our change comes. Help us, God, to look to you until our change comes. Help us to cry out to you, God, like blind Bartimaeus, until our change comes. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, you have probably seen this cheesy commercial. It's been around for years. It's the one where you have that push-button device around your neck and it summons help if you fall down and you can't get to the phone. It summons help for you if nobody can get to you. It summons help for you if you're too weak and too worn to see about yourself. And in the commercial, there's a lady lying on the floor and she obviously has fallen down and she's in distress. And in the commercial, she shouts a call for help that most of us have heard before. And what she says is this. She yells out, I've fallen and I can't get up. Lord, have mercy. And even though many people laugh when they first saw this commercial, church folk, I began to think about this, we should have begun to listen in the spirit because there's a shout in that call because it reminds us that the Lord's help uh, is on the way in times of trouble. Because when she pushed that button and somebody heard her call, when she pushed the button, somebody would have seen that she was in need when she pushed the button, 911 would have been dispatched. When she pushed the button, she would have been calling for help and somebody would have come to see about her. And I want to declare today that in the spirit, Jesus is on that main line. Y'all know that song, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want, call him up and tell him what you want. Well, he's there and he's ready for us to call for help. And then I began to think about those old telephones. If anybody young on the phone, you don't know what I'm talking about, but if you're a little bit older, got a little age on you, you've seen those push button phones. Back in the day, you push the button in order to make the call. And then I begin to put it all together. And, and just thinking about pushing that button in the spirit and having Jesus come and see about us. Somebody needs to push the button of relief and say, Jesus, I've fallen into depression and I can't get up. Somebody needs to push the button of salvation and say, Jesus, I've fallen into sin and I can't get up. Somebody needs to push 
the button of salvation again and say, Jesus, I've fallen into shame and I can't get up. Somebody needs to push the button of rescue and say, Lord, my children are in trouble. We can't get up. Somebody needs to push the button of healing. Lord, I'm in pain and I can't get up. Somebody needs to push that miracle button and say, Jesus, I need your help right now. I can't get up. No, no. Push that button and say, Lord, I need you and I can't make it without you. And if you share any of these sentiments today, if you're down and you feel like sometimes you can't get up, come on with me to the Jericho Road and meet a Savior that can speak a word and get you back up on your feet. And as we consider the text today, first of all, we've got to remember that each gospel writer was writing to a different audience. And Mark is writing to a persecuted Gentile church. We've got to understand that the early church was composed entirely of Jews and most still adhered to the Mosaic law. They were incorrect in thinking that they wanted to mix the law with Jesus, mixing what they thought the 613 Judaic laws that we found in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, they thought they needed that and Jesus, not realizing that Jesus was enough. They didn't need to mix anything. When Jesus died for our sins, when he rose from the dead, he was enough. Paul's words, even to the Roman church, began to tell us in Romans 1.16 that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone that believeth, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. The church wasn't just for the Jews but it was for the Gentiles as well. But as the Gentiles began to come into the church, they were persecuted by Jews that did not think they were good enough, Jews that did not think they belonged, Jews that did not think they should be allowed into the church. It's interesting, one would have thought they would have been persecuted by the Roman government, but their own, their own church members were persecuting them more. And so this is a persecuted Gentile and Mark has a message for us. Amen. Let us know as God ministers and, and preaches this word to us, preaches it then and preaches it to us now, it'll let us know that an outsider named Bartimaeus was able to get his blessing and his healing from the Lord. God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't play favorites, but he loves everybody and sent Jesus into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so in this text, this event, is set near the end of Jesus' earthly ministry. Jesus is on his way to the crucifixion. He's on his way to the cross. And this is his last and final healing miracle. And as Jesus is leaving Jericho, he encounters this outsider. By the description alone, this beggar is categorized as pitiful. He has little societal value. He's at the bottom of the social ladder. He was forgotten, cast aside, overlooked, and marginalized. Bartimaeus isn't even his given name. Translated, Bartimaeus means son of Timaeus. So it's as if he was being called Ingram, Ingram. We don't know if his name was John or Mark. We don't know if his name was Timothy or Daniel. We don't know his name at all. But what we do know is he had a need. And when we know we have a need, we know that's a job for Jesus. When there's a need, there's a need for us to cry out to the Lord. Now there's a large gathering that gathers around Jesus and the disciples are also around Jesus. And so they're coming and leaving out of Jericho. And first we have Jesus. You have to see this in the spirit. Use your Holy Ghost imagination. Jesus is coming out and then his disciples are right behind him. And right behind them is a large crowd. And then we have the beggar, the outsider, on the sides of the road wrapped up in his coat with his cup to receive arms. He was in a pitiful state and this life was all that he knew. Just imagine those people that we see, those 
those men and those women, our brothers and our sisters, really, that sit by the side of the road, sitting on the highway with those signs, hallelujah, I'll take anything. I need food. I need clothing. I need shelter. I'm homeless. I'm a veteran. And they're sitting there, and it's the only life that they know right now. Just imagine this outsider, this Bartimaeus with the crowd passing by, just him saying to himself, it's time to get some arms, time for me to shake the cup, time for me to take a few coins in, all I need to do is stay quiet and do what I've always done because the world is telling me I'll always be blind, I'll always be down. But then I can just imagine him as he heard Jesus and heard the disciples and heard the crowds and perhaps they were talking to Jesus, perhaps Jesus was, was preaching, perhaps he was speaking some knowledge on his way out of Jericho. What if the man began to think that his life could be more? After all, three and a half years Jesus had been in the area, three and a half years Jesus had been preaching, three and a half years Jesus had been teaching, three and a half years Jesus had been healing. What if he heard how Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law? What if he heard how Jesus cleansed the leper? What if he heard how Jesus healed the paralytic? What if he heard how he raised the dead, healed the sick, opened blinded eyes, caused the deaf to hear, caused that those could not talk, let them be able to talk? What if he heard that even the winds and the waves obeyed him? And now this same Jesus is passing by. And I can just imagine in my Holy Ghost imagination that he was saying to himself, you can do what you've always done, stay by the side of this road, or you can be bold and cry out and ask for help. Push that button in the spirit and ask for help. And the Bible says that he hollered out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He was bold and knew how to ask for help. And it's interesting, he did not have his natural sight. But he could see through the crowd. He could see through the disciples. He could see in the spirit that there was somebody that could help him. Those that were around Jesus had their natural sight, but they didn't have spiritual sight. But here it is, this outsider that's able to see what those that could see could not see. And then he was aware of Jesus' reputation. He used the senses that he did have. He used his mind. He used his he used what he did have to determine and discern that Jesus could do something about his illness. Hallelujah. We gotta use what we've got, saints of God. And we gotta look in the spirit. We gotta look beyond what we see with our own eyes. And We've got to look in faith as to what is beyond when we have a need. He knew that Jesus was more than just a teacher, more than just a rabbi. But there was something magical, no, excuse me, something special about this man who did miracles. It wasn't magic. He did miracles. He perceived that this Jesus was the master and the Messiah, this outsider who others looked down on and knew. Jesus. And then the text talks about what the crowd did. I have to ask the hypothetical question. Did the crowd cheer him on? Did the crowd encourage the chairman? Did the crowd lift him up? Did the crowd shout with him? And the answer is a resounding no. They told him to be quiet. They shoved him because sometimes people want to keep you down. And sometimes people want to keep you in a box. They want to define you by how they've always seen you, by what you've been through. People are sometimes are all right as long as you're down. They're all right as long as you're out. They're all right as long as you're broke, busted, and disgusted. But sometimes in this life, you got to say enough. Is enough. I can imagine him saying to myself, I'm blind, but Jesus is passing by. 
I might have this cup shaking it for coins, but Jesus is passing by. I might be begging right now, but Jesus is passing by. I might be depressed right now, but Jesus is passing by. And somebody that right now may be down, may be depressed, might be out. But I want to tell you right now, you can Amen. cry out for help because Jesus is passing by. And there's something about the name of Jesus, this beggar, this outside. This one that could see in the spirit who Jesus was, was bold, cried out again in a loud, bold voice. He asked for help. He made his need known by faith, and he hollered out again. And sometimes to get our healing thing, to get our breakthrough, to get our miracle, we got to make that request known. That's why it blesses my heart when we give our prayer requests. There's a vulnerability when we let our people know and let those around us for what we're going through. There's a, I believe there's a blessing when we open our mouths and begin to ask for help. Because sometimes to get our blessing, our breakthrough, our miracle, we got to keep on asking and keep on praying and keep on fasting and keep on trusting. And the Bible says that at that point that Jesus stood still. And I don't know about you, but there's sometimes in my life, I want to cry out so much that Jesus stands still. There's sometimes in my life when I need Jesus to stop, look, and listen to what I'm saying with everything he's got to do, ordering and having the whole wide world in his hands. This text tells us that if we cry out, if we holler out to Jesus, if we make our needs known, when we make our prayer mm -hmm. requests known, when we hold up our loved ones to the Lord, when we say, Lord, please help us, Lord, please Man. look down on them, Lord, please deliver them, then Jesus will stand still and come and see about us. So sometimes we got to come out of our comfort zone, thanks of God, and do something that we've never done before. If we do what we've always done, we'll get what we've always gotten. But if we do something new, hallelujah, Jesus will come and see about us. This blind man, this outsider cried out, and there are those that tried to hinder him, those that tried to make him be quiet. Amen. Right at that time, they said, Jesus, he's calling for you. Then they started trying to help him. Then they started wanting to get in on what was going on. Now, I, I love the fact even the text tells us in Psalm 23, he'll, he'll prepare a table before us in the presence mm -hmm. of our enemies. He'll make your enemies your footstool. Those that tried mm -hmm. to be against him yeah. were now and now encouraged him to come forward. Jesus was calling him out of his current state. Jesus was calling him out of what he had always known, out of what he had always been, because Jesus wants to take us out of our sickness. He wants to take us out of where we've been. He wants to take us up if we've been down. He wants to take us higher than we've ever been. He wants to take us from faith to faith. He wants to build our faith. He wants to build the glory that we have in our lives. And then I began to think about this fact. As he was walking forward, he had cried out twice, remember. The crowd that had shushed him, the crowd that wanted him to be quiet, summoned him to come forth. And as he was coming forth, he was still blind. He was still having to feel his way. He was still blind. And the text says that he threw aside his garment as he boldly stepped out towards his healing. He can't see. He feels his way. He removes his coat. That coat was the most precious thing that he owned. But Jesus meant more. That coat represented his begging. That coat represented his sorrow. That coat represented those that pitied him. But he threw it aside because sometimes you got to throw aside your past in order to get to your future. you got to throw aside that thing that is tied to your sickness so that you can get to your healing. you got to throw aside that thing that represents your past to get to what Jesus has for you. we got to throw aside that past. Throw aside those former things to get 
to the wonderful, wonderful miracle working power of Jesus. So before his sight was restored, he went forward. Thanks to God, sometimes it's time for us to take a step forward. Well, Pastor Tammy, I, I don't know where that step forward is going to take me. we got to take that faith step. Before the situation changes, take a step. Before the sickness is ended, take a step. Take a step. Declare your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Declare your breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we got to take a step forward even while the tears are falling, even while the heartache is still there. Before we can see it, sometimes we got to move forward. Hallelujah. He boldly removed that coat and what had defined him because he made up in his mind that today is the last day I'll be bound. Today is the last day I'll be blind. Today is the last day I will beg. Today is the last day I'll be in brokenness because I'm asking for help. And then he asked him a question. I love the fact that Jesus asked questions. Hallelujah. John 5, he asked the paralytic who had been there for 38 years, do you want to be made well? And he asked the question of the blind man today, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? It's interesting he asked him that question. He had asked for mercy, which implies that is the first question that he asked for. He was asking for forgiveness of his sins. That word, amen, in the Hebrew suggests that it's favor. He asked for favor. He asked for salvation. He asked for that first. He realized that it was necessary to have his sins forgiven before anything physical happened. After he asked for that, Jesus asked him, what exactly do you want me to do for you? Thanks to God, perhaps Jesus is asking us to by faith ask specific. Do we have, have enough faith to be specific? Do we have enough faith to ask for healing? Do we have enough faith to ask for breakthrough? Many of us are worried about the political unrest. Have the faith to ask Jesus to take care of it. Many of us are, are, are distressed because of racism, discrimination, divisiveness. Let's have enough faith to ask Jesus to come. Some of us are, are have unrest in our hearts because of things that are going on in this world, in our lives, in our homes. Let's have enough faith to ask Jesus exactly what we need. And he makes his request known. Rabboni, that I may receive my son. And hallelujah, Jesus ministered to him, telling him that his faith has made him well. His faith in the Messiah, his faith in the Master made him well. His faith in Christ made him well. His faith, and now the text doesn't exactly say this, but I believe it is implied that Jesus' faith was the first faith that the blind man saw. The first image that was revealed as his eyesight was restored was that beautiful faith of Jesus. I began to think of that song, Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. There to stay forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice. Cares all past home at last ever to rejoice. But the shout of the moment is that Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And the text says that given the option of going his way, he decided to follow Jesus. That's the shout right there. I said, going, given the option to go his way. He said he could have gone back to his family. He could have gone back to his home. He could have gone back to living his former life. But given a choice, he decided to follow Jesus. And, and, and I have to say, I don't blame him one bit because one encounter with Jesus makes everything all right. Hallelujah. He asked for help and he got the helper. He asked for a blessing and he got the blesser. He wanted to get out of his mess and he got the Messiah. And I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what's got you blinded. I don't know what has you down. I don't know what has you depressed or oppressed. 
But I do know if you ask for help. Oh, hallelujah. I do know that if you reach out for Jesus, I do know that if you call his name, that everything's going to be all right. Because if you follow him, he'll open our blinded eyes. If you follow him, he'll help you to be able to see in the spirit when those around you cannot see. If you follow him, he'll give you a brand new walk. If you follow him, he'll give you a brand new talk. If you follow him, he'll break every yoke. If you follow him, he will deliver you. If you follow him and ask of him, he'll save you. He'll give you the victory if we just call on his name and ask for him. I could not help but think of this beautiful, familiar hymn that you can see if you call on him. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that made the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Thanks to God, be courageous, be tenacious, be faithful, have faith in God, and most of all, know how to call for help. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and every believer once again said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Knowing how to call for help. Let us pray. Father God, again, we sometimes would rather remain in darkness because we fear the light. But God, let us reach out to your son Jesus. Let us reach out to the one that died so that we could have divine help. To the one who died in every strike that he took said that we're healed. Every strike that he took said that we're made free. God, give us the courage to take a risk and to cry out. Give us the, the courage to, to resist our stubbornness so that we can cry out and get out of this darkness. Give us the courage. Even if the world says we're outsiders, to know that we're insiders to you. We thank you for every blessing you've given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now receive this benediction and this blessing. Thank you. Darkness has been banished. Your sight has been restored. Our lives are reformed in Christ's love. Go now in peace to serve with great joy. Bring the love of God with you so that the light which has reformed and brightened your life may shine forth to others. Go now in peace and be blessed. Amen. 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 We'll go Amen. in peace. Walk in the light, his glorious light. Amen. His faith made him well. He will make us well. Hallelujah. Be blessed. Have a great morning and a great week. Thank you. Bye-bye.